All right. Now, these related rates problems can be kind of uh, tricky. And so you have to remember the, your geometry and your trigonometry in this. Uh, it's not necessary. There are certain w things that you can kind of use to get around them. But if you know them, uh, it can really simplify things. And so this problem is somewhat involved. It's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into two parts. I'm going to solve part A and part B on one segment. And then I'm going to record a second, uh, a second segment for part C. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So our problem tells us that the endpoints of a movable rod of length one meter have coordinates x comma zero and y at zero comma y. The position of the end of the x-axis is given by x of t is equal to one half sine of pi over six t. Part A asks, find the time of one complete cycle of the rod. And part B is what is the lowest point reached by the end of, of the rod on the y-axis? Okay. So, very first thing, we want to take a look at the time it takes for one complete cycle of the rod. Before we even get started, we have got to draw ourselves a picture. And so just all you have to do is copy down the stuff that it tells you. I have coordinates of zero x, or x zero, x zero. And then I have y0. Oop, I don't want to put it on that side. Zero, y. All right, now we can assume based on this, based on these coordinates, that this is in fact our y axis here, and this is our x axis here. I might have drawn that just a bit low. That's all right. Okay, and so we have this relationship where we have our length y here, our length x here, and now it says that the rod that goes between those is one meter. All right, so now we have our picture. We have a movable rod, here it is, of length one meter. It has the coordinates of x0 and 0y for its endpoints. And the position of the x-axis is given by, or the end of the x-axis is given by that problem, which we'll deal with that later. So part A, find the time of one complete cycle of the rod. Now, you might not have heard of this. Uh, in, in physics, it's quite prevalent, and you probably have learned it at some point in your career, but it wasn't particularly um, emphasized. So if we look at the period, of some cycle or cyclic activity uh, in rotations at least or in uh, or in uh, in the sines and cosines of things we're looking at distance over the frequency the distance in this case is 2 pi All right so period is one revolution one revolution is 2 pi that's what it takes sine to revolve and then we have over the frequency Okay, now in trig, you should have been uh, informed at least, or you should have learned at some point in your book that you, when you have something like this, where you have x of t is equal to a sine, and this might have been omega t, okay, or k, uh, actually, math tends to use kt, so I'll use kt. Okay. Now, A is your amplitude, is amplitude. This is the maximum travel. So this is max travel in one direction. If you recall your waves, this is going to be a, the, either the um, uh, either antinode, the measurement of either antinode of the wave. If you don't, think about a wave on the ocean. If, you if you're coming up to the top of the wave, the difference between um, the top of the wave and the bottom of the next wave, take that and divide it by two, that's your amplitude. All right, K is your frequency. All right, so it takes a certain amount of time to go to pi, or in this case, it goes um, uh, pi over six, according to ours, pi over six in so many seconds per, um, per second. So if we do that, then if we work that out, then what we've got is we've got our period, which is what part A is asking. Our period is equal to 2 pi divided by pi over 6. 
which is equal to 2 pi times 6 over pi. Okay. We're dividing fractions, so we have to invert and multiply. Pi's cancel, and we get 12. So we get 12 seconds. And that's it. That's all it is. Okay, part B. Part B says, what is the lowest point reached by the end of the rod on the y-axis? Don't forget that our amplitude is given by the number out in front of the sign. Okay? And so what we're doing is we're going back up to our, our drawing here, and we're saying, all right, now x is at its maximum. So it's this way as much as possible. It's going to be moving off. We've chosen it to the right. And so as it moves to the right, it's going to reach a maximum. That maximum is 1 half. So x max is equal to 1 half, all right? Which means that you have a minimum on the y, because as x moves out, y is going to come down. So x moves out, y comes down. So you have a y minimum that x is equal to 1 half. Okay, so that's our low point. Now, we have to find out what that is, and so I'm going to draw a secondary triangle down here. And this is just going to, going to kind of help me out because I'm going to need numbers. I've got one meter out here. I've got my x max is one half meter, and then I have a y number of meters. I don't know what it is. So now we can take Pythagorean's theorem, and we can go through and find this. And we know that x or y squared plus one half squared is equal to 1 squared. This is just Pythagorean's theorem. Then we can subtract 1 half squared from both sides. So we have y squared is equal to 1 squared uh, minus the other minus when I subtract minus 1 half quantity squared. This gives us y squared is equal to now 1 half squared is 1 quarter. So this is 1 minus 1 quarter which is equal to 3 quarters. If we take the square root of both sides, then we'd have y is equal to the square root of 3 quarters, which is just the square root of 3 over 2. So the minimum of y is the square root of 3 over 2. That's how much is, uh, that's what the height of it is going to be. Okay, so this is y minimum. And you'll see that's uh, 0 0.866, I think. And so it's not going to go down by that much. All right. I'm going to stop it here. If you have any questions as to, as to what I did, take a look back at what I've done up to this point. Okay. So we started out and, and we drew our picture. That's the very first thing. The next thing is we knew we were dealing with signs, and so we wrote down everything we knew about signs. We know that A is our amplitude, which is our maximum value. We know that K is our frequency. Then through the, through the definition of period, we found that the period of it was 12 seconds. That's the amount of time it takes to make one cycle. After that, we said, well, okay, well, what's the lowest point reached? Well, we found out our maximum. Our, our, the maximum our X moved is 1 half. And from there, we use Pythagorean's theorem to find out how or, or the minimum height y is. On the second part of this video, we'll look at part C, which has, deals with the rate at which y is, de is moving.